We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X, and today I'm here with my co-host, Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Bivens, director of marketing for Pioneer X. Today, our guests are Kirk and Andrew Hines, father and son, dynamic duo, and owners of Kirk's Pharmacy. Welcome. So how is Washington? Uh, Washington right now is great. It's nice and warm during the day and cool at night, yep. so it's a pleasant time of the year. It's not not the the brutality which is the rest of the country right now at 104. Mm-hmm. It's a little hotter than we usually have it. It okay. was supposed to be 97 this week, but it actually dropped down to 91, so it's a, it's okay. a little bit bearable. And that's dry or humid? It's dry. It's dry. Oh, nice. Okay. It's been it has been even though it's been hot here, the humidity's been lower um, than it typically typically would be. But it's been a a, a it's brutal. Still been a- a scorcher Brutal summer yeah but all right so father son um how did y'all like kirk where did you get i mean was your dad a pharmacist are you well let's start out with where they are where are you in washington yes where are you in washington so we have three locations um one of them is in eatonville the and two of the other locations are in puyallup and if you look at the state of washington the we're 30 mile about 30 miles straight west of mount rainier and about a half an hour to 45 minutes um, from Tacoma and about an hour south of Seattle. So we're considered Western Washington. So is Mount Rainier a volcano? It is. Mm -hmm. It is a volcano. Does that ever trouble you? No. No. You know, it's been dormant for a long time. Of course, back in the 80s when Mount St. Helens blew, uh, people were starting to think about, are these other volcanoes going to be active? And um, so far, it hasn't rumbled very much. And um, it's just a beautiful sight to look at. Yeah, it is. that is pretty part of the oh, yeah. the country. So how did you, Eatonville's where you started? You know, I, I was the first one, when you think back of how I got started in pharmacy, um, I was the first one in my family to go to college. Wow. And wow. Um, okay. I was working for a general contractor at the time, and he encouraged me to go to community college to um, take some classes to potentially um, help him in his construction company. And um, when I got to chemistry, my organic chemistry professor was a retired pharmacist that went back to teach. And um, I was working in the chemistry department, setting up the labs, and he encouraged me to go to pharmacy school. So I applied at Washington State University and got accepted and um, went through to pharmacy school. And I knew that I wanted to, growing up, I was in a small town in North Dakota. So I really loved that atmosphere, the small community where everybody knew everybody else. And um, so when I got out of pharmacy school, that's the only locations I applied. I looked in small communities with independent pharmacies with down the road potential to purchase the location. And ended up in Eatonville. They were looking for a pharmacist manager. They hired me right out of pharmacy school to manage that store and um, started working for the Coltons. It was called Colton Pharmacy before we purchased it and worked for them for eight years before we bought that location in 1995. Okay. And then Andrew, obviously, you followed in dad's footsteps. I mean, what, what was the driver that said, hey, yeah, I want to I wanna be like dad? Yeah, certainly. So, um Kind of on the, the flip side, growing up in a small town, um, you kind of want to do anything possible to get out of that small town. So uh, Amen. for the first about 17 years of my life, I really wanted um, nothing to do with pharmacy. Uh, <laughs> I'd worked as, you know, the, the you know the bag boy, the break the box the boxes down when mm-hmm. I was in middle school. Um, so I worked at the pharmacy a lot and it was um, probably my senior year of high school I got to work. Um, right next to my dad in the pharmacy as an assistant. And I think that's really where I saw um, just how impactful a really good pharmacist can have on their patients and their community and the role they can play in their patients' lives. And that um, kind of really inspired me to reconsider my, um, you know, my pathway in life. And so 
uh, the um, added bonus of working for my dad, working with my dad in a family business um, kind of sealed the deal. So after I graduated and, and started um, at the University of Washington, mm -hmm. my sole focus was to go to pharmacy school and become a pharmacist. Um, so just I think the, um, the role a pharmacist can play in the community was a big impact. Now your store, that we have three stores, so are, are you have the two stores in um, that are in the same town? Where are your um, stores? So my dad, my dad lives and runs the Eatonville location that he's okay. had yep. for about 30 years. And then I live in Puyallup. And so my main office is at our farthest north store. So we kind of bookend the company and then we kind of meet in the middle as needed. So, so let's talk about meeting in the middle. How far apart are those? How, how far are you from the grandkids? That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> Uh, we're it's about, about 45 30, minutes. Yeah, but that's not 30. bad. Okay. So about 45 minutes, then about 20 in the middle. Yeah. Do you, about, do you keep the grandkids a lot? How's the the grandkids know their grandparents well? They do. Um, and we, we try to get together with them. My wife goes down every Tuesday and has Grammy Tuesday and spends the time with the grandkids. Nice. We try to vacation at least once or twice a year. And the kids come out to our house in Eatonville spend the night as often as we can get them out there. Um, having a super fun time now, I'm building a tree house for them. And Yay. I'm having more oh, fun wow. building the tree house, and I think they're gonna have playing in the tree house. So far, it's two stories tall. Oh my gosh. And uh, having a lot of fun working on that one. Two story tall tree house. Now I, yeah, I'm gonna that, be- That's bougie. I'm gonna be all over when they get grandkids, <laughs> all over the tree house now. I think that's, that's, that's you great. You don't have a tree in the backyard that can do that yet. Yeah, so cute. My daughter's son, um, Carter, came over and he was looking at it and he says, Bubba, where am I going to sleep? And um, <laughs> that's the second story to put a room up there for him. Nice. Nice. So where are you say y'all vacation once or twice a year? Where's the last place you guys went? The last um, time we went over to Hawaii. Nice. Um, of course, when we, because my wife was a teacher, my daughter-in-law is a teacher, my son-in-law is a teacher. And um, so it was, we were hoping that once the kids kind of got out of school, we would eliminate going on the school holidays. Well, we're back on those school holidays. So mm -hmm. now the grandkids on one side and the son-in-law on the other side, their spring breaks don't line up. Mm. So it, it's a benefit for us, I guess, because then we book look two weeks in locations and one family comes over the first week and one family comes over the second week. Nice. And, nice. Uh, and time. So we went to Hawaii, the big island with the Andrew and his family, and then went to Maui with Amy and her family. Oh, so you did year. two islands. The big <laughs> island is which one? Oh, yeah. Is the big island, which is the big island? That's not Oahu. Well, no. The island is Hawaii. It's the farthest one that's okay. um, south. It also yeah, has a volcano. That's also, very we've done Oahu. Yeah, yeah we've done Maui. Oahu and Maui. Yeah. Yep. So, and we're about to do Maui again next summer for my daughter's senior graduation. So that's going to be so much fun. Yep. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Going to do a splurge and stay on there. In Maui, there's a place called Baby Beach um, where there's a lot of, uh, I guess it's kind of coral or, or rock formations um, in the Bay Area. So there's not a lot of, the waves don't come in really far. Um, and so you can actually just walk, we'll be able to walk out the back door and snorkel. It's going to be oh, nice. Amazing. Super discounted. No. <laughs> Not at all. Do y'all surf? I've taken a surf lesson or two and, and love to um, love to play out there in the waves and boogie board. And um, both of us are active wake boarders and wake surfers behind our boat. So that makes it kind okay. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We had, when we were in uh, Oahu, we had the best teachers for surfing. Yeah. The best surf instructor. Yeah. They were so good. And just like, you know, <laughs> we're sitting there, you know, uh, just dying, yeah. kind of pedal out. And they're like on their board, grabbing your board and you with their feet and just. And still paddling like it's nothing. <laughs> and, just, and just moving. I'm like, okay, yes. I feel good and I feel bad. I chose well. I don't feel like they had to assist me enough. that much, but um, I was a swimmer, so. Yeah, there it went. There it went. <laughs> I just got, I just got some, I just got some shade. Yeah, this this trip with uh, two four and six year old grandkids, it was um, a lot of uh, a lot of extreme sandcastles. Uh, oh my yeah. Dad and I built uh, like an eight foot octopus structure, a giant crocodile. We built a you know six by six you know race car track with tunnels and 
But no two-story sandcastles? Yeah, a lot of fun playing in the sand. Yeah, yeah I love it. I, and that's, that's me on vacations. I'm the more, I either want to do one, just my wife and I, or I want a lot of people. You know, yeah. like, like it's like being in daycare, you know, where you have like playstations, you know, you can go over mm -hmm. here and play with a Play-Doh, you can go over here and play with a Legos. That's when you get a big group of people on vacation. You got little, you know, like, go over here. And talk and this to this is why I call you a man child. It's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> All right. So let's start. So Kurt, I, I think one of the most interesting things I found about your pharmacy, and, and we'll let you talk later about what you think is interesting, was when we were there, it's kind of this model of the pharmacist at the point of sale. Do you still do that in Eatonville? Is that still a thing? So um, as far as the point of sale, we have our point of sale is up front, but we do um, kind of our workflow is where the patients pick up. They still check out at the register up front. Okay. But um, everything's kind of the workflow comes through the back. But didn't you, weren't you like pulling this stuff out of will call? Is that? Am oh, I yeah, that's definitely. That's kind of my role. We're right there um, as they come up. We're the ones that are grabbing it because most of the times they've got questions and the questions are for us. Okay. So we try to be that point of contact when the customer walks up to the counter. So you to have be able to hand them the prescriptions. And you still have what was it, RX um, Med Medics Med bag system? Mm -hmm. We do. Yes, it's been um, in Eatonville. In Eatonville, we have that system. We were um, previously with QS1 when we were looking at um, switching softwares. It still sticks in my mind because I. Um, was visiting with Marsh, Marsha and came up and, and um, we had had the light up bag system for about maybe a year because mm -hmm. that's always been the bottleneck at our pharmacy is the trying to find the patient's prescription. So now um, we were looking at switching softwares and I invited you to come over to RX Medic and you guys talked a little bit and within a month we had the interface written to make my bags work. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I had remembered you had come out to visit and um, attended the annual Washington State Pharmacy Association conference, mm -hmm. came out to our store, and it's, it's still right in, in the forefront of my mind because you were watching us do our workflow, and I, and I had mentioned, Jeff, if I could have a button right here that would light up these bags rather than going click, 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 um, you got on the phone, the next day I had a button on my screen to be able to light my bags up. So now I can see the customer walking down the sidewalk and I can key their name in and light the bag up and grab their prescription and have it in my hand when they walk in the will call area. Nice. And um, it keeps that workflow just kind of turning. And, and they're mm -hmm. super impressed that we have their medicine right when they walk in. We're not spending time looking for it through our system. And, and it should be noted, somebody bought that technology. So RX Medic is a, is a business again. So you can buy oh, the bags oh. again and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there was a time when, um, when Red Cell got the QS1 business uh, QS1, our, uh, the, the Smith family got rid of the sunsetted the Arx Medic business. Um, but that technology and name has been bought by another company now, and they're doing the bags and everything again. So great. It's a great system. A lot of people were disappointed when they couldn't get the bags and stuff anymore, and that the company's out there. I'm surprised they haven't reached out to everybody. Now, you have that in Eatonville. You don't have the bag system in, in the other stores? At that point in time, they were not busy enough to be able to have the volume to, to need the bagging system. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew's location down here in Puyallup is probably getting to that point. So we'll evaluate okay. putting that in um, once the volume, because they don't have 15 people standing in line to wait to pick up their prescription. Their workflow allows the patients to come in in a little bit more timely fashion, where we can allow um, the, the pharmacist has more time to look for what's going on where in Edenville, it was, um, the line was all the way down the aisle waiting to pick up. Mm -hmm. And another, another feature that is, I think delayed our, our need for the bags is eight years ago when we switched over to pioneer, one of the main drivers was medication synchronization. Yep. And I mm -hmm. think, um, at that time, and even today, pioneer sync program and the workflow, far exceeds any other software out there. And so by having the majority of our volume on sync, mm -hmm. all the patient's prescriptions are filled together and bagged together. So we don't have to, uh, you know, every day go find that same patient bag when a new prescription comes through, they're already all together. So our bags, are, our volume is reduced because all the patient's prescriptions are already bagged together because they're already filled together. 
which has really allowed us to maintain a low bag count. And and Andrew, we visited your one of your locations, and you had just gotten the Parada at that time. And mm-hmm. we had been to your dad's store that morning, and you had a Script Pro, I think, don't you, Kirk, in your store? I have a Script Pro in two of the locations, and then we've got the um, Parada Pass down here at Andrew's store. Mm-hmm. And at the last show we were at, we just purchased the Max 2. Oh, wow. So that's coming soon for this October. location. So is there any, do you see any model where you're filling in one location all the, med, your like bigger MedSync patients and then just, hey, delivering? And doing a shared yeah. inventory. Yeah, that was um, that was actually our initial driving force of, of purchasing the the pass packager. I think in 2014. So we've mm-hmm. had that for almost eight years now as well. Um, was looking at our yeah our higher volume patients that are on a lot of medications that need help. So balancing that workflow. Eight years ago, the location I took over um, was the lowest in volume. And so instead of looking to hire a new pharmacist at the busiest location in Eatonville, we just shifted a lot of their, you know, high volume prescription patients onto the the strip packaging program. And that allowed us to balance that workflow. And we have a daily courier that just runs between the stores and then drops off the med boxes at each location. So the patients in Eatonville still use Eatonville as their home pharmacy. But we fill and package their medications, and then we deliver it either to the pharmacy or to the patient's home in Eatonville, whichever they prefer. Yeah, the farm, the pharmacist at that location, um, he always sticks out in my brain because he reminds me of um, Maui, the Disney character, very big, strong, muscly mm-hmm. man. Because yeah. every time, I, because I'd stand over the shoulder just like Jeff does, and I ask questions and go, "Oh, you know, you can do this," and show you some quick tips. And it's like every time I'd show him a quick tip. It's like he would slam his water bottle down. I was like, I don't know if I'm angering you. And the text was like, no, 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 that's his happy face. That's his happy face. And I was like, okay, we're just going to go with that. So, Andrew, you were an early adopter of MedSync, in my opinion, you know, as far as really taking off and doing it. Yeah, I appreciate that, Jeff. Um, so I graduated from pharmacy school in 2013. And, um, you know, within pharmacy school, I was heavily involved in um, the Washington State Pharmacy Association, as well as the National Community Pharmacy Association, NCPA. Um, I actually interned um, at Holly Wickham Henry's pharmacy um, right after she was president of NCPA. So I had a great mm-hmm. mentor in Holly. Um, I got involved in you know student leadership with NCPA. I got to meet um, and, and know Joe Moose really well. Yep. So nice. a lot of the pioneers and innovators, I feel like in MedSync and, you know, kind of the, you know, 2009 to 2013 time frame when that was really kind of taking off i got to learn and and watch the people creating kind of that idea of med sync mm-hmm. so yeah right out of pharmacy school when i came on board um, with my dad i was like this is what we got to do our old software didn't have anything so i had a binder and a piece of paper per patient all handwritten wow. calendar you know day things and we were moving it around yep. and mm-hmm. it was difficult and i um, found that after about two to three months of on paper you know things would start to fall through the cracks and it just you know we needed automation we needed it streamlined mm-hmm. i was a hundred percent running the program and i was like this isn't scalable at all yep. and mm-hmm. so that's when i was really like dad we gotta we need a Either they need to change tomorrow or we need a new software. And so it took us about four months of evaluating kind of the top three softwares before we landed with Pioneer. Mm-hmm. I remember talking to you guys at Cardinal in uh, D.C., National mm-hmm. Harbor, years ago. And then um, that was July. And then that November, we came to your state association and um, you were like, yeah, we just moved over a month ago. And I was like, cool, wait a minute. I talked to you guys. Yep. But um mm-hmm. Once we switched over to Pioneer, Andrew came up with our training program for all of our amazing technicians now that um, kind of run that program for us now. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the most amazing things now to be able to um, digitally send out the information on the the cycle to the patients rather than calling them. We still call quite a few of them, but Mm -hmm. the ability to send out that message to them, hey, it's time to renew your medications, they can respond back through their text message, which is just amazing. It saves a lot of time. 
but still we like to put that personal touch in. So without our amazing technicians here at the store that run those programs and, and we've got patients that see our phone number calling in and when they pick up the phone, they say, hey, Jasmine, I'm, I'm doing great. And um, they know who's calling, they know yep. what the call is for and they look forward to it every month. So it works out super well. Well, and another really cool innovative thing that I, I love that you guys do is that I've noticed is that you guys kind of kick off the conversation in your state as far as, Hey, we're doing this and who else is doing it? And can you guide me on this? So y'all, y'all have in like an emo group with everybody in the state association, which is pretty freaking cool. And we're working on a project that's going to kind of enable you guys to kind of text other pharmacists via app. But, um, so what, so y'all are using the MedSync, the prep message? Yeah, yeah, it was, um, again, it's it's unfortunate just in the, the general workflow. I, I kind of liked the forced pop-up of like, hey, here are the weekly updates. You have to kind of scroll through them before you, you know, can move on with your day. Now they're just kind of in the background. So I didn't realize that the, the MedSync prep message was a thing until um, one of my technicians in Eatonville had brought it to my attention. And yeah, I loved it. In the past probably three weeks, we've really pushed hard for it. And we found a significantly greater response than my our technician leaving a voicemail and yep. not hearing anything. So it's been a, a big game changer and a huge time saver. Yeah, and that's and there's just some people that that that's how they want to interact. You know, um, they don't mind you calling if you got something to say, but if it's just hey, this is normal. You know, they want to. And that was actually Bob Lomanek's idea that he kind of pushed for. And, um, oh, wow. that's that great. that's going nuts at his pharmacy. Um, he is making sure that, you know, we've had some, I think, um, you know, Benjamin Jolly asked me, Hey, you know, sometimes the patients are confused by the messages. And my point to Benjamin was, yeah, you, you need to kick off a, you don't just need to start doing it. You need to tell them on the mm -hmm. phone, you're going to do it or send them a custom message that you've designed. Um, the very first time you're going to say, Hey, we're going to start doing this. Um, so it just doesn't appear. Um, yeah, I created a little quarter sheet printout that we would stick with all of our sync patients like for the past couple of weeks. So when they pick up their meds, they got the flyer like, hey, this is a new system. Would you like that better? Hand us the slip back with your name on it. And then we can kind of enroll them. So, yeah, we've done a couple of different tactics of touching patients with that yeah. update. Would love to hear if you guys had any ideas how to make that better. Um, so I think adoption was slow initially and probably just because that people are busy didn't realize, you know, that we had it, but especially now after connect, cause there are a lot of people heard about it connect. A lot of people started using it. Um, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of weirdness how people will use the, um, the actual sync day that makes the little last screen different for people about, Hey, your, your preps, your mess will be, your stuff will be ready on or before this um, date. So I think we need to make that last screen a little bit more flexible, mm -hmm. but, um, it's good. Any other, any advice was from somebody who's been using MedSync as long as you have, um, advice to pharmacies who are getting into a MedSync program? I know you got into it a long time ago, but any things that you found good point, good tips and tricks? Well, I mean, that's the best tip right there is as soon as you open your doors, MedSync's the first thing you're doing. Yep. But for somebody who's had a store longer, Kirk, what would be your advice for, okay, we're going to start doing this? You know, I think that we, Andrew and I both probably have different ideas or the same ideas, but I just had someone yesterday at my pharmacy in Eatonville when I was working. He was working trying to help his wife manage her medications, and um, he was coming in different times of the day, and you just have to key into those those frustration indicators that you're going to see in patients coming in. And if you take just a couple of minutes to ex kind of go into a little bit more detail about mm -hmm. what we do for our patients and how we do it and um, explain the whole sync process to, to them, they, they are so excited about it and um, trying to, it, and it doesn't have to be 15 or 20 medications. It can be four or five even um, to be able to make it easier for them. And, um, and then that allows us, once we get them cycled and into the sync program, then we take the next step and um, potentially offer them to go into the strip packaging to make it even easier to be able to take their medications. Because I've had patients that Andrew's uh, enrolled and they've come into our pharmacy the second or third month and a uh, comment to me is that I can't believe how much better I feel. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm when I'm supposed to. Yep. At the right time of the day and um, it, it being a little bit more adherent. And then you go to the next step then and you look at your 
your equip scores and you look at all of your indicators that you're looking at for keeping your patients adherent and um, to be able to um, our, our accountant has commented to us that out of all of the pharmacies that he's working with our dir fees are probably one of the lowest dir fees that he's seen nice um, nice they go as high as seven or eight percent and and we're down in the very low low percentages and i think it has to do with all the work that andrew has done on getting getting us all up to speed on um, getting everybody on the sync program to be able to um, have them maintain their refills and get their medicines and beyond the medications that the that was a great job on. son if you didn't miss that if you missed <laughs> yeah, that i got that now thanks jeff that? Um, and yeah i, I mean, said that was a great job that son was a if you boy. missed that that was attaboy <laughs> yeah, yeah. um i would say um from just kind of the, the management of a successful program is you want to, you know, have your your specific employee that kind of has their specific patients, but at the same time, you want it to be a team effort and you want the group buy-in. So when a patient calls and if their their health coach or their specific person is busy mm-hmm. or or unavailable, anyone else can answer the basic questions, can kind of get them, you know, started on down the sink yeah. pathway of just, you know, hey. Have there been any changes to your medications? Are you seeing the doctor? You know, they know the questions. So everybody is empowered to help all of our patients. It's not, oh, you need to talk to employee A. I need to put you on hold. Oh, you're looking for employee B. I can't help you. Everybody can answer the basic intro questions. And if there is, you know, a next level question, then they kick it to the pharmacist Mm -hmm. or they say, I'll make the note, we'll get you started, and then I'll have your your health coach follow up with you later today when they're available or they're back from lunch or or, or whatnot. So really, um, you know, not siloing each individual task. Have the main health coach for your different groups of patients, but at the same time empowering all of your employees, even, even our assistants. You know, they can answer the phone. They can see, oh, yeah, you're a sync patient. It looks like Sheena was just reaching out to you. Yep. Um, you know, they can they can answer a few of their, you know, the, the intro questions. Um, so that way it's not a burden on any individual one employee. Cool. Okay. So, um. One of the conversations that we recently had um, with a pharmacist was about uh, vaccines and they and I guess they weren't fully aware, but you guys do vaccines and y'all do travel vaccines. So what all is that consist of? Because what was the one we were talking about? That was uh, the monk. It was monkeypox, but you could get this in place of or as kind of small. It was a smallpox, smallpox. Yeah, I think that's what we were trying to figure out is if it was like... smallpox, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you probably, your travel vaccines probably includes a smallpox vaccine, right? Depending on what country they're going to? Um, we've we've never administered a smallpox vaccine okay. or, or had to order it. Um, the biggest the biggest travel vaccine is going to be yellow fever. Okay. Oh, okay. Yellow fever is the, is the vaccine that certain countries um, are, you're required to either have what's called a yellow fever book with an official yellow fever stamp within that book to get into the country and or potentially get out of that country and re-enter other countries. Interesting. Um, we, and uh, so how that yellow fever process works is we actually applied to get a yellow fever stamp. They are made specifically for one individual healthcare provider. So I have a yellow fever stamp that has my license number on that stamp. Wow. Oh, okay. And so I'm the only one that can use that specific stamp. We applied for that stamp um, about six years ago. Uh, and at that time, yellow fever vaccine uh, that is approved in the US was not being manufactured or was unavailable for about five years. Oh, we wow. just got approved five months ago for our yellow fever stamp because it finally became available again. Yeah. We had visited a pharmacy once. I don't remember if this is me or you or not, but I know I did. There was a pharmacy in Houston and and they did travel kits. So not only (laughs) did you get a vaccine, but they also had these little IV balls in there. And I guess if you certain, if certain, you got a certain thing there, you could go ahead and treat yourself with it. I don't remember what the medication was, Um, but it was kind of, 
Yeah, so certainly um, a really, you know, a, an effective travel clinic is going to be really comprehensive. And so through collaborative practice, you know, drug therapy agreements or, you know, CDTAs, partnerships with medical providers, um, our clinical pharmacist has set up our program where we are able to have prescriptive authority for, you know, traveler's diarrhea antibiotics and, you know, anti-nausea um, medication, okay. altitude sickness medication, um, anti-malarials. So again, depending on where this individual is, going. you know, this traveler is going in the world, we're able to fully cover them, you know, pharmaceutically for whatever they're going to run into. What do you think the IV ball was? You think that was like an anti-malarial, a malarial um, treatment? Potentially, or, you know, potent, just a, kind of an electrolyte thing. Um, you know, again, potable water throughout the world is, you know, questionable in different spots. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'm not specific on what that that may have been. Yeah, the, the um, concept but, was that the treatment might not be good where you're going and that if you got X, you would treat yourself with the IV ball. Um, and they focused on like the oil um, industry, I think, you okay. know people going to oil rigs and stuff like that, but it was interesting. interesting. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this summer, once we got our, our yellow fever stamp, we probably done uh, probably 40 to 50 travel consults. Oh, wow. Um, which have been, yeah, really interesting. How are the vaccinations going? Um, I, I think during uh, a lot of people have said like um, your non COVIDs are down, right? Your flu and your, um, Shingrix and your other things. Have y'all seen that? Um, no, I mean, our, our Shingrix is still fairly steady. You know, a lot of people, um, are coming in for their, their COVID and different things. And so we'll just, you know, we'll always just kind of ask them, Hey, are you up on your, your shingles? Um, cause that's still one that most people are needing. It's not flu season. So next month we'll really ramp up our flu shots. Um, with that, uh, the new pneumonia, the new pneumonia vaccine, um, we've kind of you know started been kind of promoting and pushing that a little bit when they're getting their shingrix. Hey, are you are you up to date on your pneumonia? Um, I think if you want to talk about the integration, that uh, yeah, <clears throat> one of the things uh, I was our pharmacy in Eatonville was invited to participate in a, a project impact immunization with the APHA Foundation a few years back. In when in the criteria for the study is that anyone over 18 that came in for a flu shot. Uh, it was initially they created the our first uh, two-way link to the IIS here in Washington that we were able to look up the patient's immunization nice. history. And when they asked for their flu shot, we would look to see if they needed uh, their their Tdap was up to date, their tetanus, their um, Shingrix, um, all their other vaccines. And, um, and then offer them um, to catch them up. And some of our patients were getting three and four vaccinations when they got their flu shot. And um, so after the, wow. after the study was completed, we kept that same mentality and just kept moving forward with it. So when anyone comes in to ask for one vaccination, we would look in their history. And now Pioneer allows us to do that right through the software to be able to pull up and see what their um, what their needs are and then offer those vaccinations. And um, it has increased the number of vaccinations that um, we were doing um, at least two to three times what we were giving. And then with the flu vaccines now, we um, our clinical pharmacist works in Andrew and I have coordinated with, um, we go out to businesses and schools and um, different areas and long-term care and actually give flu shots, not just within the pharmacy. Oh, wow. so we have all these clinics already set up where we're going out to do vaccinations. I go up to Mount Rainier and um, do all the park rangers up there. And, and it's I, my mentality is it's easier for one person to drive 50 miles to go up to Mount Rainier than it is for 50 people to drive to Eatonville to get their flu shot. And they really appreciate the service that we provide. So it's kind yes. of um, us going a little bit above and beyond to kind of keep the community healthy. And oh, we absolutely. appreciate your sacrifice for driving up to Mount Rainier for the afternoon. It's just a terrible thing to do. Yeah, right it's just now. horrible. So it's, just, but that makes so you bad. You get a gold star in heaven for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we so, talking Alzheimer's when we're talking vaccinations these days? You know, the latest stuff showing that, that – um, Alzheimer's is a combination between the shingles virus and the, um, the cold sores, whatever the, the, that her, her herpes. Yeah. Herpes. So those two, yeah. 
combine in a way to cause Alzheimer's is the latest studies. And they're finding that uh, vaccinations against shingles and even additional, like the more vaccinations you have, and they haven't really figured this out why, like even if you get flu regularly, these are all going to reduce Alzheimer's. A lot of stuff we know previously about Alzheimer's was for some forged work, which led us in a wrong direction for years, years. but there's support now that, hey, shingles vaccine and regular vaccinations in general will reduce your chances of getting Alzheimer's. And I was wondering how... You know, is that something that you guys are up on? Are you talking about that when you're talking shingles vaccine? I'm not, I, I apologize. I'm not up on that. I didn't hear that, but that's something I'm going to look into because we'll that's, start promoting that for sure. Yeah. Because you know, <laughs> way, way, way back, we our flu vaccine used to come in multi-dose vials, and so many people in the community were fearful of the preservative. Okay. So uh, Andrew and I decided quite a few years back to order uh, preservative-free pre-filled syringes and eliminate the preservatives to take that variable out of the equation mm, when nice. we're doing vaccines. And um, it's it's actually um, made it a little bit easier on our workflow and and um, made the patients happy that we listened to what they wanted us to do and, and changed very rapidly. But um, no, I've not heard that. And that's a very relevant topic. That's yeah. And I think, you know, compared to, Hey, I'm kind of afraid of vaccines and you know, I, I, I could get a rash for a little, I'll be okay. As compared to having Alzheimer's, you know, I think yeah. is a big, is a big difference in the story. A rash that feels like you've been kicked in the ribs. Yeah. The rash is bad. <laughs> I had shingles in my, in my thirties and it was, it was not pleasant. So uh, other wow. than, so, I mean, in addition to you going up the uh, Mount Rainier, which I'm just, I'm sorry, you have to do that. That's just, that sounds horrible. Um, you know, one of the biggest things we always talk about a pharmacist is get out from behind the counter and be active in your community. And you guys are very active and not just in your state association, but in your community. Um, I think my note says mayor, Someone's a mayor. Was a mayor. Yeah. Was well, the, mayor. If I look back and, and you know, I always wanted to, I'm, I, I love volunteering. And um, so when I first moved to Edenville, the second day I was there, I was invited to join the Lions Club. So I think right now I've got 38 years of perfect attendance in the Lions. Wow. Um, okay. Later that year, I was um, uh, invited to fill a vacant seat on the town council and then Four years later, I think I ran for mayor. It was the first time in Eatonville's history that they had a primary election. There was four candidates running for mayor and uh, made it through the primaries and, and then ended up um, winning my election and serving my my term from 1990 to 1994. I think I was the second youngest mayor in Washington wow. um, at that point in time because I was still pretty young and um, and then um, finished that that term and then ran for the um, Eatonville School Board and served on the Eatonville School Board for 14 years, um, okay. been president of the Chamber of Commerce. So I think I've held almost every single seat in um, in Eatonville. Including a president of the Pharmacy show. Association, yeah. too. Andrew, think, time, got some work to <laughs> yeah, do there. To <laughs> well, oh, and yeah. the thing that... Um, you know, one of the reasons I really wanted to get you guys on here is it's I love always running into you guys because, Kirk, you're in everything. You um you even grow your own wine. Oh yeah, how's that going? Yeah, I you know the, this year we bottled 53 bottles of our Pinot Noir, and um, um, I um, have been sharing a little bit of it uh, with folks. And um, yes, it's we a very fun list. little hobby. I, we my sister list bought yet. me plants quite. <laughs> few years ago and I've got 160 plants which gives me about a thousand pounds of grapes oh, wow. a year and then um, the kids come out and help pick usually and and um, crush and to stem and How about this and, and, and and it's been a fun little project so so pretty connected to the community what, what would you guys say um, marketing wise what's something any, anything y'all found that's worked in your communities um, you know marketing is a tough is a tough thing for us and they don't teach you a lot of marketing in pharmacy school and um, we we've tried working with um, other other companies to help us market and um, have really not I, I you can speak but I, I haven't really found anything that works other than word of mouth and oh, yeah. um, just people seeing what you're doing and um, if I have a, a patient that comes in and has a great um, experience in our store, I'll just ask them, please tell your doctor um, how we how we took care of you or how we treated you. And the patients telling their physicians how they were treated um, 
um, it, it just, I think it comes back two to three, fourfold on that. Um, and I've had patients come in um, that have been to the doctor, maybe it's a new doctor, and they're asking, where would you like me to send your prescriptions? And they say Kirk's Pharmacy, and they say, oh my gosh, we've heard nothing but good things about that location. Nice. So the kind of stuff that makes me feel good, and um, hopefully that is the, yeah. Well, that's certainly marketing. I mean, asking the customer to tell their doctor or to tell their friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, just saying, hey, we grow by word of mouth. If you had a good experience today, tell somebody, mm -hmm. right? Well, and I mean, that's kind of what the basis of like Yelp was about was, was mm -hmm. creating this atmosphere where everybody can go, yeah, this is amazing. You should try it. And that's the best marketing tool ever is, is word of mouth and, and references. Yeah. And that's always, you know, more than 50% of our referrals come from more than 50% of our, our, our leads refer come from yes, referrals. Yes. More than 50% of our leads come from users, um, referring others, not to mention there was, um, a Forbes article that I read that, you know, 89%, it was like 89 or 90. It was some, it was really high of people that they look on Google and they look at reviews and they're, you know, they're, it's not just that they're looking for you, but they're looking for why do I need to come to you? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's that word of mouth and those reviews and that positive word that refers them to come to you. Yeah, really promoting strong relationships and then, and then just asking, you know, again, um, yeah, we really appreciate you coming here. We're, we're happy you appreciate our service. Mm -hmm. You know, can you let others know, you know, on Facebook or Google or Yelp, you know, kind of you know, encouraging, you know, those, those positive reviews. Cause like you said, yeah, when you're looking at, you know, where to eat or, or where to buy something in a, a different location, um, you know, reviews are, are, are very, mm -hmm. you know, they, they stay there as opposed to, you know, they tell them once and then they forget about it. But if it's written down on Google, mm -hmm. then it, it will always be there, which is really beneficial. Well, and especially um, to people who are new to your area, because I mean, during the pandemic, there was a lot of people moving around. And so it's like, okay, I got to find a new doctor, a new pharmacy. Okay, well, I'm going to Google and look on Yelp. And Yeah, did you find people move, move, moving a little bit more rural? Did you find people moving out of Seattle and moving more south, uh, maybe getting to work from home or something like that? Or were they just like totally moving? You know, I, I there there wasn't a lot of building going on during COVID, so there wasn't a lot of options. Like okay. where I live in Eatonville, there's not a lot of places to buy or rent oh, wow. on that one. And um, so I don't, um, that's an interesting, yeah, with that. I did want to kind of digress a little bit back to the other question, you know, and, and customers will come in the store and, and I, and I, they have always options to go wherever they want to go, which pharmacies they want to choose. Mm -hmm. And I will, um, not all the time, but if, if I, I'll let them know how much I appreciate them choosing us and thanking them for their business. Yeah. I think that's because huge. The option I had, the patient come in, I'm fighting mail or I'm fighting mail or I don't want to go because I really love the service you provide. And um, so I tell them, you know, just reinforce how much we appreciate kind of yeah. them. And then you think back to kind of marketing again with um, during COVID, um, another pat on my son's back, he redesigned our whole entire website. Um, to be able to to work through the COVID, not necessarily for e-commerce, but for just the vaccines huh. and the information on the vaccine and the appointments. We had, I can't even count how many people that had commented about, you know, I was looking all over for a COVID vaccine. And when I went to your website, it was so easy to navigate, so nice. easy to make mm -hmm. an appointment. And um, I really appreciate appreciate how how simple that was, and um, you know we've done um, probably we almost forty almost forty thousand COVID vaccine doses Crazy. at this point, and um, so that was been a huge huh. huge impact on our business. And did you pick up new customers from that? Did you collect? We picked up so many new customers because they appreciated how easy yeah. it was mm -hmm. to get their vaccine, mm -hmm. and um, we just invited them. We would yeah. love to have you come utilize our store. Yeah, such an opportunity. COVID was a huge opportunity for small for small business and independent pharmacy just because the ones who are agile and who could do that and create a better experience, the experience at the chains was horrible. Um, well, I mean, the ability to be able to walk into a play, into a, a community pharmacy such as yours and go, do you have the COVID shot um, and then get the vaccine? Whereas if you show up to a Walgreens or CVS, they're going to go, no, you have to go to our website. You got to fill out the form and make an appointment. And they're just shooing patients away. And I was like, that's great. Keep doing that. Send hmm. the business our way. So what are we working on now? I know y'all you guys are always working on what's 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 this month's project? 
as far as the pharmacies are concerned. Sauvignon Blancs, maybe? <laughs> uh, this month's project is we're trying to work on our staffing. Okay. Um, okay. Trying to balance the staffing out. You were commenting about earlier about how Andrew and I and our pharmacists have so much time to visit with our patients. And um, so we, I, we chose early on to try to utilize as much technology as we can. And um, so we've got the robots in each of the locations and um, uh, the Pioneer makes the workflow um, mm -hmm. so easy, which allows us to spend time visiting with our patients, um, probably focusing on getting his robot set in place. That's the Max 2? That's the new one Max, that you get? Max 2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that the up. one with it's got a camera inside. So it actually takes a picture uh, of the pills in the top. We actually show yeah, that at the check yeah. station. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That and, um, you know, one of our great partners um, is our, our county health department. That's been a huge resource um, for testing and vaccine through the pandemic. And um, we've been finalizing um, contracts and uh, agreements for being a monkeypox uh, vaccination site mm -hmm. for exposure, prophylaxis, or high-risk uh, populations. So um, hopefully within the next month when we kind of get into flu shots, we'll be able to also offer the monkeypox for uh, those that are at high risk or, or exposed and kind of getting that fleshed out. Um, Will that be like... Again, Will it be like COVID? Will that be paid for by the government or is that uh, something their insurance will cover or how does it, how's, what's the payment model there? Um, so it will be ideally insurance will cover it. Okay. And then if not through the contracted agreement with our, our local county health jurisdiction, we have a, a billing avenue through them, okay. through their grant. So we won't bill the government directly. We'll bill our health department and then they have funds to support those efforts for the okay. uninsured. So that is being distributed through the health department? Right, mm -hmm. in our state. In your state. The, okay. the, yeah, our state health department allocates so much vaccine to each county health jurisdiction, and then that health county jurisdiction will evaluate their population needs within the county and then distribute it to so many sites as they see fit. So I think the way it's getting initially set up is that it's it's for post exposure pro prophylaxis and it's it's the health department will notify us who is eligible for the vaccine at this point in time. Okay. It's just you can't walk in and ask for a monkeypox. It okay. they'll notify us on who gets the vaccine and they'll send them to our location. Mm -hmm. And then as it becomes more available, then they'll start opening it up to um, I think the general they're, they're population, they're but risk. it's very specific on who gets the vaccine so, at this point. In time. So explain that to me. So, so typically I think vaccine, you have to get it like, like COVID you're thinking, Hey, 14 days before, you know, the vaccine's not good until it's had a little while to take, but you are saying with monkeypox, they're using it almost as like a treatment that I've been exposed. Right. So can you explain why it's different? Wait, <laughs> The way, the way it's right now, per my conversation with the health department, is um, if you've had a direct known exposure within, I think it's 72 hours, you can, you know, get the vaccine and that helps, you know, lessen or reduce the, the, the symptoms or severity within that person. So there's a very small window post-prophylactic. Gotcha. Okay. And then there is, um, you know, there's a high risk population for exposure. So that small group has also been approved to get, you know, you know, to get a pre, you know, prophylactically. Mm -hmm. So there's post exposure within, I think, three days or so. And then the high risk group can get it now at their leisure. But, but don't you think the high risk group is just because of how it got into the country and spread, not really long term how that would spread? Probably. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see schools, you know, you got close contact with kids and I mean, that's, um, Hopefully it'll become more available and everyone that wants it will have the access to it. Yeah. Super interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, you just worry that one's going to be another one of those that we just missed, uh, oh, yeah. that we didn't get the attention on it quick enough. And how is that looking in, in Washington state right now? Um, Again, I think it's hard to say talking with some of the, you know, health department people, they're like, we have one case in our county, but if you watch the news, it seems like it's a five alarm fire. Right. But, you know, that is what sells on the media. So I mm. think it's a little bit of also 
they don't want another pandemic. So I think they're really trying to, you know, hit this but extremely the hard. Treating it like it's the new pandemic. Not, yeah, not get thrown under the bus like you didn't respond quick enough. But yeah. right. within at least our county thus far, there there's a few cases, but it's not anywhere near the levels that it seems like it feels like. Yeah, I think I saw something nationwide is like 10,000 cases, which, which still seems like a... If something was super contagious, but it's not super contagious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's something that, yeah, we need to be paying attention about, but I don't anticipate any lockdowns or anything to that level. Yeah. So we're working on the robots, working on staffing. Uh, did you survive okay the great resignation, or was that the challenge for you guys? No. we. Um, I think we survived it well. We've been incredibly fortunate. Um, you know, my dad's established a really great, you know, employee support culture mm -hmm. and valuing our employees where um, we, I find we really only lose employees due to their life circumstances. You right. know, their spouse has got Moves a better job right. yep. and they have to move or they're not working anymore. You know, very rarely do we have staff that Go that somewhere leave else. us to go work at Walgreens right. or yeah. go work at Safeway. So it's either a big life challenge. You know, one of our pharmacists had to move back to Texas to help take care of her mom. Um, so for us, it's more you know, extenuating circumstances than just people don't want to work for us. Thankfully, I think we, yeah. we really value the hard work that our staff puts in and we try and um, treat them, create, yeah, really yep. supportive culture. Good. That's amazing. That That's important. So, no, I could, um, I could see that. Yeah. Sounds like, it sounds like it'd be a neat place to work. Beautiful place to work for yeah. sure. Cause if, if, if they're thinking their customers, they're thinking mm -hmm. their employees. They are. Yeah. Yep. So, well, thank you guys for joining us. This we are, we are at our hour. Um, do you, unless, do you have more questions? Oh, I could talk for another I hour. I know you too. can. I <laughs> know you can. <laughs> <laughs> any, any advice that you'd give other pharmacies, um, kind of in closing today or? You know, I, in closing, I'm excited. Um, when we first switched over to Pioneer, you had commented about the the email network group that we created here in Washington. Yeah. And um, yeah. all the initial users of Pioneer, I don't think we were the first one, but we were probably in the in the third or fourth. And um, we've got a wonderful group now that once we figure something out within Pioneer, we'll, Andrew will share it throughout through our group and people will kind of chime back in. And um, I'm excited that Pioneer's looking at creating that that a little bit bigger network because at the, um, we recently switched to McKesson. So we were at the McKesson show and I had a, a yeah. lot of opportunity to visit with Pioneer users back there. And there were quite a few users that um, didn't have a really good understanding of the capabilities of the software. So yeah. we were um, in, you know, encouraging them to go to connect and um, to Thank be able you. to kind of learn from that aspect, but also look within their areas of other users to be able to mm -hmm. share. Because when you, well, you know, one of the key things that I figured out early on was that if you future fill a prescription, you can set up Pioneer to automatically order that product two or three days before that prescription is ready to execute. And there were stores this year in D.C. that didn't know that. Huh. So um, to be able to show them those little tidbits and tricks that initially Andrew dove in head first and they learned so much about the software so they're constantly educating us on on um, what we need to be looking at. But um, yeah, there's still lots of training. So the the individual groups, I'm glad you're doing that and, and putting that network together. Thank you for creating that atmosphere for other Pioneerx users to ask questions and be a soundboard and and, and big advice hubs. So we appreciate that. Yep. Um, and it was great visiting. It's always fun visiting you guys. Yes, and was. also, thank can't you wait for to, your business. Can't wait to see you guys again in person. Mm -hmm. And uh and maybe we'll maybe we'll make the wine list. Yeah, maybe we'll make the wine list at some point. <laughs> maybe we'll Wait, what, I'll give you a bottle next time I see you. If you're coming out to Washington for the annual meeting this year, I'll Fantastic. bring one. Fantastic! All, All right. right, I'll hold you to it. Well, thank you well, guys nice. so much. You guys have a great us. day. Bye, -bye yeah, you guys. Thank you Thanks so much, so much for inviting us. We enjoy being here. Marcia, Jeff, pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Kirk. Bye, bye. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.